And today we're going to take a look at the colony of Maryland, and in particular how faith, the Catholic faith, had a big part in its creation. Now you can't tell the story of Maryland and the colonization of Maryland without taking a few steps back and remember a guy by the name of King Henry VIII. Let me be your ruler, ruler. And if you recall your British history, you know that in the 1530s there's this whole big spat with the Catholic Church. Um, and basically this sparks the Protestant Reformation. We're not going to get into it here. But by 1558, when you have Queen Elizabeth in charge, England is pretty much a Protestant nation. Um, and in, Protestantism is the dominant religion in the region. Now fast forward to 1634, and this is where you have the period of the colonization of Maryland. And the way it all goes down is Maryland's going to be the second plantation colony established, the fourth colony founded. And if you recall, our first plantation colony is right there south of what will become Maryland over there in Virginia with Jamestown established in 1607. So how do we get Maryland? Well, there was a family, uh, the Calvert family, um, part of the Baltimore crew. And Lord Baltimore was a prominent, wealthy, Catholic family. And the king gave George Calvert a huge, big tract of land um, prior to 1634. Now, he dies just as he's about to get this whole colonization thing going, and his son takes over, Cecil Calvert, takes over the colonization plan. And by this point, England's dominated by the Anglican Church. And so... Lord Baltimore gets a charter, and he's from a prominent Catholic family, and he has a couple of goals for his charter and his colony um, aspirations. One of them is pretty obvious, and that is money. He wants to make money, but another one that makes Catholic uh, Maryland, oops, I gave it away, which makes Maryland so unique is this emphasis on providing a refuge for Catholics who are discriminated against in England. Lord Baltimore wants to establish a safe haven over in the New World for these individuals. So there's a religious origin or motive in the colonization of Maryland. You know, just as there is a religious motive in the establishment of Plymouth by the Puritans and the Pilgrims, or in Pennsylvania with the Quakers, they want to escape that discrimination from England. Now, something important, and especially for those of you in the A-Push world, this is different than the whole Virginia um, colonization, partly because the way it's established. There's no joint stock company. Instead, Lord Baltimore, the Baltimore family, gets what is known as a proprietorship. And what it says is, the king is going to give you... This land belongs. This land belongs. This land belongs to me. Land. The king is going to give you, or a group of individuals, in this case of Maryland, the Calvert family, a big chunk of land over in the New World. And they get a charter, and they're able to govern the land as they see fit. And what ends up happening is, Maryland is established in 1634 by Lord Baltimore. That's why you got Baltimore, Maryland, home of the Baltimore Ravens and other sports teams. It's part of the Chesapeake region, right there north of Virginia, and it's a proprietary colony. Now it's interesting, something that they try to establish in its early period is they establish these feudal manors. They start giving these big feudal like land grants to other prominent Catholic families. And some of the best land starts being dominated by these Catholic families. And this feudal setup is brought over from the old world to the new. Now that's not going to bring people over here though because if you can't have access to land, why would you come? So eventually, they make this transition to a very similar type of economic structure as the one that's over in Virginia. Smoke it. And what I mean by that is cash crop, head right system, 50 acres, tobacco, plantation, economy. So the economy of Maryland is going to be very similar to that of Virginia, and they both belong to the Chesapeake Bay. Now, important point to keep in mind. So they try to set up this feudal system, it, you know, doesn't attract people, and they have to abandon it, and of course there's a problem. 
They're establishing this colony as a refuge safe haven for Catholics, but pretty soon... There starts to be problems developing between the, the growing numbers of Protestant settlers and the very wealthy, powerful Catholic minority. And what ends up happening is they take a cue from the old George Michael's hit, Faith, and they establish a law which basically says we, the colony of Maryland, are going to provide for an act of religious toleration, or more commonly known, the act of toleration. Because I gotta have faith. And basically what this law does, passed in 1649 by the Maryland's Representative Assembly, it guarantees religious tolerations to all Christians in the colony of Maryland. Now before you start holding hands and singing Kumbaya, this only applies to people who believe in the divinity of Jesus. So if you're a Jew or an atheist or some of the other religions, uh, you don't get this religious toleration, no toleration for you. But it is an important establishment of freedoms of religion um, in the British colonies. Now, an important point to keep in mind is don't forget in Rhode Island in 1636, Rhode Island up there in the Massachusetts Bay Area, they had established the first colony which allowed for separation between church and state. So Maryland's going to continue to grow. And even though there will be more Protestants in the colony by the American Revolution, it will have more Catholics than any other colony in the British Empire, in the Western Hemisphere, and... That closes us out. Make sure you know those terms, those concepts. Thank you for watching. And as always, subscribe to Joe's Productions. Check out my other videos. Have a beautiful evening.